Okay. So, we've done the Couchcade, which didn't use quite as much of my screen as I would like, vertical space, uh, but looks really good, very crisp detail, just a really nice uh, collection of games with their original arcade controls, so I can't fault Arcade 1-Up uh, for their curation and, you know, other than it would have been nice to see some bezels, a little bit of extra production on that side of things. And then we did the Evercade Atari Arcade Collection, which is a weird collection of games featuring not a lot of recognizable hits um, and mostly games that don't use controls that are really suited to a, a, a console with a, with a digital pad, frankly. I mean, some most of the games will work okay. You could get something out of it. Uh, visually, not as sharp. The vector translations don't look as good. Then there's the glaringly embarrassing uh, labeling of asteroids with the background artwork from Asteroids Deluxe as Asteroids Deluxe when they are not the same game, <laughs> and which still baffles me that that happened. Um, but then we're going to move on to the PlayStation. Now, these were released on PS4, uh, God, I think 10 years ago. I mean, they've been out for a while. Um, I'm playing them on a PlayStation 5. It's backwards compatible. The DualSense has some superficial differences that won't matter to this at all. Um, let's, let's fire it up. Atari Flashback Classics Volume 1. Now, I do want to look at the rest of these, but the games in here. Oh, this is Code Mystics that did the emulation. Uh, and this is, you know, at games is behind this. So that's something. Um, so it's not Atari as it currently incarnates. It's more like a licensed collection. But we're mainly interested in looking, I'm looking at the arcade titles. I do want to look at the rest at some point, and I won't play every last one of them because, you know, when you play 2,600 games on the con 2,600 plus, it's not going to be appreciably different, but I do want to go, there's a couple compilations in the Evercade that are very well curated. I would like to take a look at, um, and the Flashback Classics is mainly focused on arcade and 2,600. And we're going to see, obviously, some overlap here. So. Uh, Lunar Lander featured on both the Evercade or Atari comp and is on the Couchcade. So is Millipede, so is Centipede. Tempest also on the Couchcade. Space Duel on neither one of those, uh, but unlike the Couchcade, uh, Space Duel is a game that um, you can play with more than one player simultaneously on a PlayStation. Uh, Liberator not on the Couchcade, although it could have been but is on the Evercade comp. Pong, not in the Couchcade, but could have been. Is on the Evercade comp and is a terrible version of Pong. And Arcade Warlords, which is on the Evercade compilation, but not on the Couchcade. Because being a multiplayer game, you're not really gonna do that on a single player control deck interface. And just for a quick overview, there's another three pages worth of cards. Uh, with the presentation overall is very good uh, for the arcade games. We have the marquees from the arcade uprights and a spinning uh, representation of the actual cabinet. Pretty cool. I, I think that's extremely cool. So you can even see the, the side artwork from these machines. It's also handy because you can see what the control panel looked like. Um, and so you'll note that uh, Black Widow was a dual stick game. Uh, Lunar Lander featured uh, the, the thrust control was this big heavy bar uh, that you would flip up to abort the mission. Um, space tools, a bunch of buttons, you know, you get, see, you, get the, you get the idea. Black Widow, what are the options? Well, pull up the screen, you get to see the cab controls. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh-huh, tells me what I need to do. And if I press the X button, I can, in fact, remap controls, even for the dual stick game. So if I wanted to, I could map it to be 
the D-pad and the buttons on the face for these different things. All right, so that's mapped. And then we have, uh-huh. Try to start a number of lies. When you get the bonus life, difficult medium, advanced start up to level 21. Don't know what that means exactly. Oh, that means, um, sorry. Like uh, Tempest, uh, Black Widow allowed you to start at a higher level uh, to get bonus points. It saves the high scores. When that, from that screen, you can change them. Display. We can turn the bezel art on and off. We can have Atari 2600 flicker scan lines on, which I do have enabled. We'll see how that looks. Realistic vector glow. Other choices are bright, bold, or standard. I like realistic. Hosting message. I don't know what that means. So can you play this online? I didn't think so. I don't see any evidence of that otherwise. And the audio. Okay, so that's it's pretty straightforward. Oh yeah, there is a multiplayer option. That's amazing. Okay, cool. So it has online multiplayer. That's the first for, for any of these. And the rankings are recorded somewhere here. Let's see, can we filter for I can't I can't find my own score. Well that's sad. I guess I'm just not good enough. What can I say? These arcade games, and you get online score, and they get quite competitive. Anyway, let's fire up Black Widow and see what it's got to show us. So there we got the bezel. Look at that, like the arcade bezel. Representation of what the, the buttons in the arcade actually looked like. There are these little conical things with, with the, the actual button that you pressed would flash when you had credits for it. And this tells us how the game is played with the attract mode. Now. If I remember correctly, in order to start, I think I press Option, yep. Push the left stick and press Start to begin. Okay. So there we go. That's a basic twin stick. The whole object is to kill all of these little bugs and pick up the things afterwards. Pretty straightforward stuff. Get the bone a little. Nicer. Now some of them, like the beetles, they'll eat the other bugs, and then the yellow ones will turn them into, they'll reproduce with them. So you want to pick up your grub stakes, as they are called. And the big ones won't hurt you. If I touch any of these little ones, oh, that's made some special guy. Oh, now there's these horrible things that... Yeah, I got all of them. Okay, cool. And that's it. Now you can go through the green webs, but you can't go through the red ones. Even though you made the web, presumably, as a spider. I don't get it, but... And these guys, you want to push into the center, off the edge to score. It's a pretty straightforward game. I mean, you know, there's not a whole lot of complication to this. I remember really enjoying this when it first came out. I like dual stick interface. It's very empowering kind of control. You can move around and shoot in any direction. All right, more of these. Guided missile guys, I didn't get all of them that time. They just around. Oh, now we have a new bug type. That one explodes in a big concentric circle of doom. You need to make sure you stay away from it when you, uh. Oh, I touched one. Just as in nature, if you touch one of these. Oh. Ah! And when you blow up one of those big ones, the, the circle will kill everything else, too. Yeah, I knew I was going to get caught eventually. Wave 15, not too shabby, but actually not my highest score. Well, I got 94, 100. I could try to look myself up on the online rankings for my own edification. Now, if I want to quit out of here, I think... I have to press, yeah, so I hit twice. So the thrust roller, which was an analog interface, 
if you press it, I think if you, oh, abort was a button, okay. So it's rotate left, rotate right, thrust I've got to R2. So I got a little bit of that analog thrust control to replicate the arcade. Pretty groovy, which is different from both the arcade and the couch kit. The couch kit is just using buttons, so we don't have an analog uh, thrust control, which we did have in the arcade. And the variation button is square, and the abort button is X. So now I know what I'm doing. It looks like it's a display again. So I've got realistic vector grow, electric glow on. Let's see what bright looks like. Well, bright is even more of a crazy glow. All right. It's interesting that the game was basically already in progress. And I can just hop back and let's look at the display. What is, uh, let's see what bold looks like. Resume, oh, that's even more glowy madness. Yeah, I can see why I went. But, but if you look at the detail, very sharp. Much better than the Evercade uh, compilation. And the display variations aren't really necessary, but on the other hand, it is something that they that, that the Couchcade does not have. Not to mention which again, bezel. <laughs> um, but clearly we're only presented with the option to display in this original aspect ratio, which is fine, you know, because I'm a bit of a purist. That suits me right down to the bones. Let's see what the standard looks like. Oh, there's none. All right, standard. The standard is a faint glow. And we're gonna go back, I'll, I'll, I'll toggle through all of them. Just for, as long as I'm doing it, I won't mess with this again. Uh, and glow none. And there it just looks clean. So this is more like what the couch cage looked like. Pretty sharp, good quality, but I can't help myself. I do quite enjoy the realistic vector glow. You can see the little points at each uh, line. Let's see if I can get a perfecto. There we go. Columbia has landed. Ooh. <sighs> Fabulous. You can feel the difference right away. I mean, geez, I turned it on strong gravity and there's no way I'm going to survive this. This is insane. What is the moon got? Earth's gravity now? I'm going to use all my fuel just trying to get anything approaching a rational touchdown and I'm not going to make it. So, yeah, yeah, you don't want that. Moderate gravity, I think. Oh. Well, I was it. I died. So anyway, that's um. So that's the thing is, it's remembering state. So every time you you're having to like basically start and then hit option again to exit, um, means that when you come in, you're going to be like potentially in the middle of the game. So that's why you might need to go and hit the menu to go reset, hit the reset switch on the on the machine. Now I'm going to do that right now. So we'll say reset. Yep. All right, so now we get to, to see it vanilla, but I quite enjoy the uh, one player with two ships. That's my favorite way to play this game. But as you can see, the vector representation is really good. Animation is amazing. I mean, it's, a, it's just very nicely put together compilation I, and you know I was like what code mystics not digital eclipse uh, when I first got this and then I went yeah these guys know what they're doing I mean they gave me all the options that I could want in terms of um, 
having the uh, the button customization and everything, all the control customization, what's not to like? And you can see that this is very much, you know, Space Duel is very clearly of the asteroids lineage, but there's some addition of geometric shapes that are very cool, taking advantage of the technological advances and aside from the you know, appeal of using a ve color vector display instead of black and white. All right, centipede. Now, I'm using again a D-pad, but let's take a look at what our options are for the controls. So it's it's saying trackball. I can control the sensitivity and set the fire button. That's it. Well, what does this mean, practically speaking? Uh, let's find out. It's not giving me a lot of detail here. Um, so let's let's just jump in and, and see what's what. Now this one, I'm actually going to be going and playing a game that does use scan lines because it's based on a raster display instead of a vector display. And the scan lines look not too bad. Now I'm using a D-pad right now. And you can control the sensitivity of the D-pad, but here's another thing. The touchpad is also in use. So if you can see, I'm actually just touching my finger on here. And this is about as close to a trackball as I'm going to get on here. I actually did think I might, um, I don't own a USB mouse, but I am contemplating getting one just to see if it actually would work with a USB mouse uh, automatically. Clearly I can't, I'm able to use a D-pad or, or the touchpad without having to tell the game what kind of control. And as you can see, I'm not doing bad here. I got, I got you know, I'm on wave three. So, but this is slightly awkward. Let's see what I can do with the thumb, how that works. It's, you know, I can't grip the controller normally in order to do this. If my thumb was longer, I guess that would work. It's not like I have small hands or anything, but it, certainly if my hands were smaller, this would be even more difficult. But otherwise, I'm basically like holding just the right side and I'm just holding the fire button down. So I'm, it's, you know, the good thing about Centipede is it's a game where you're not like, you know, twitching. Um, but it's playable, it looks good. Uh, the bezel looks amazing. It would have been, it would be nice if it, if it does support a mouse, that would mean that I could plug a trackball in here potentially. Um, I, I don't know, we'll find out. I already know that um, the Atari 50 collection uh, the Digital Eclipse did on the PC apparently does support uh, analog interfaces like a trackball, but the PlayStation uh, and probably and assume presumably the Xbox version, the console versions of that game do not. So that's that's kind of a shame. But on the other hand, I have the Couch Cave if I really, you know, if I want to scratch that itch. Millipede, I suspect, is going to be the same deal. Yep. And this one I've made the trackball less sensitive for some reason. So clearly I, I, I went and played around with it and, and felt that this was the best way to do it. But again, uh, D-pad interface, perfectly workable. You might notice I'm also doing a lot better than I did playing Wave 1 on the uh, couch game. And I don't know if that's just because I, this controller feels more comfortable to me than the couch game trackball or what, but <laughs> is the difficulty on this easier? I doubt it because I was playing it on the Evercade and I know that one's too on the easy side of the equation. But I think it's just the D-pad is just really precise. Now let's try just using trackball and see how I do. Well, trackball. Touchpad. Let's use the touchpad. And it's a, in the touchpad, I'm using my fingertip, and it's quite a precise uh, interface. So you can do it. I mean, I certainly don't feel hard done by. I, I owned this before I had the couch cave, and, you know, I didn't play the heck out of it. But yes, because I don't find this that comfortable, frankly, to hold it like this. So I think if I was going to play Centipede or Millipede, I would probably choose the Couch Cade, although I can't fault the presentation. The bezels look amazing. I mean, look at how sharp it is on my uh, Sony OLED. And uh, the scan line effects look pretty good. It looks to me like a 
like a CRT style uh, display. It's not, uh, you know, the Evercades are, filters are a little bit uh, muddy, I'll say. They're, it's not quite as clear. I don't know if this is a, an account, you know, this being a 4K machine on a 4K display and the Evercades using, I don't know what resolution comes out the back of it. Who knows? I'm not going to make a judgment on that. All right, Tempest. So this is one that's... I like this game a lot. One of my favorite Atari arcade games. So we've got a dial sensitivity, fire and super zapper. But I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be overjoyed. So the D-pad works. All right, let's start on this one. Now, what's the problem with using a D-pad for this game? Well, you can compensate for the fact that you're using a digital interface by turning up the sensitivity so that it's more responsive. But what you can't do... Let's try that again. That didn't turn out well. Um, oh. oh, I pressed fire to select. The problem with the touchpad is that it has a limited travel, right? I've only got the width of this. If I turn it, if I hold it like that, I can get it to spin all the way around, but I can't reliably take it back. It's just not... So this is giving me a result that's better in terms of the control, but obviously it's not really a functional way for me to play this game. And I can use the analog stick and, you know, they've tuned the controls a bit. So it's a serviceable interface. I'm not going to argue with that. But it just... You know, so using the analog stick or the D-pad, you're getting a similar result. Um, I don't know. I, just personal preference. I mean, you can play the game this way, but I think the spinner control is definitely more satisfying. That is the original control. It does feel a little more precise. The touchpad is just, you know, you're getting an analog interface for it, so you've got that kind of speed of movement, but the problem is the size of the control surface is too small to give me the kind of rapid, you know, I want to jump so I can jump to the other side much, you know, noticeably faster than with a D-pad, but um, I can't reliably get back to it, so you end up feeling like you're you're having to fight the control a bit. You're having to, like, pick your finger up and put it back down again, and uh, again, although visually spectacular, I mean, it really does look quite good with the bezel artwork and that it's fairly tight control. But if I wanted to play a game of Tempest, again, I'm going to choose the uh, couch game. Just because I want to have that, I want to actually have that analog spinner. Liberator. Uh, you know, this was, I found this perfectly playable for the, um, you know, here we're getting to the sensitivity again for the D-pad stroke trackball. And again, it is going to allow me to play it with a touchpad. All right, so I can do this. Or I can play it with the with the D-pad, which is which feels fine. You know, the Evercade was fine too. Scan lines look better than on the Evercade, 100%. I mean, this is I much prefer this. And uh, and the bezels again, terrific. got destroyed already. Or my ships, I should say. My fleet. I'm in the space. Not on the planet. I don't have bases, right? And that missile command mindset. No, no, no. You didn't get me. Oh, look at that. That sneaky satellite. Just... 
Now they're getting me. I'm, I'm, I'm too hyper focused. <sighs> hey, rookie. Yeah, yeah. I would, but the, you know, they're, they're, they're just speedy little guys. There's a problem with landing one of these. Oh, they got me. I mean, it's fine. I kind of wish, you know, I, I mainly wish that this existed on the uh, couch gate, to be honest. All right, pawn. Let's let's see what our experience is going to be with this. Uh, dial sensitivity. So, so far, this is the only game that I've seen yet on this collection that is using a, a um, potentiometer-driven control. So now you'll see right away big difference here. A, unlike the Evercade Pawn, this actually kind of looks like Pawn. That's one. Uh, like like actual Arcade Pawn, not like some superficial facsimile some guy cooked up overnight. And uh, it feels better. The control feels a lot better. And it's not like turned up to 11 speed-wise. Now I can use the touchpad for this. Okay. Notice every time I pick up and put down, it relocates the paddle. That's kind of a feature uh, that's going to be more apparent when we're looking at the other volumes at games like Super Breakout because because of the fact that we have this like limited control surface size. That's like a, a compensation for that is that you can. I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to jump over here so I can try to you know compensate for the fact that this is not necessarily ideal replacement for a, a, a paddle controller. I mean, I get the movement, the analog movement, great, with my finger, but the problem is I only have this limited surface to play with. So to give me that ability to kind of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, switch over really fast. They let you like drop, touch and drop down. But the fact is that it still doesn't feel the same. If you're using the D-pad, the accelerator will basically, you know, the longer you hold the button down, the faster it's going to go. But there's no way that it is going to move as fast as it would if you had a paddle. And I've broken even just by, like, not paying attention at all. Um, just for fun, let's take a look at the uh, game settings. Points to win, difficulty, so you can do the difficulty, you can set gaps at the corners. Cool. All right, so that was Pong. So it's a, it's a definitely a playable version of Pong, unlike the one that's on the Evercade, uh, Atari Arcade Collection, which I don't consider to be a playable version of Pong. Uh, the review that I read that's only looked at Pong and said, worst game of Pong ever, 100% correct. Now look at this. This is the only uh, as far as I know, the only compilation with an arcade version of Warlords that actually has the background artwork reproduced. Um, pretty neat. Pretty neat. So, interestingly, I'm in the lower right-hand corner. You might remember when I played the Evercade arcade um, version of Warlords. The player one was in the lower left-hand corner. Oh, man. But well, here's the limitation again. The D-pad, it's, it's playable, but it doesn't really feel like I have control. And the touchpad is actually, although an analog interface, it feels worse because I'm moving it back. And, I mean, it, it's because you're, you're going around the corner, you got to go all the way on the side. So this is the problem with using the touchpad as a replacement for a trackball. If I, if I touch down here on the right, I can kind of get it, you know, to a, a serviceable degree. Oh, God, I need to capture that ball. They're going to they're gonna do me in. I know it. Oh, there's two balls now? Come on. Ah, good, I can catch it. So I have X set for the catch. So it is, and the analog stick is way, you know, that's really sensitive. I would need to to really tweak this to try to make it 
feel all right. So I suspect that most people trying to play Warlords on a PlayStation are going to end up using something like the, uh, the D-pad control, which, you know, so again, this is another, uh, come on, I want to get out of this. All right, so this is another situation where I, you know, you're, you're really, you're really going to be um, wishing you had a potential a paddle controller. I mean, you can tweak the, the sensitivity, but then it's like, well, what, what control am I using? Uh, this is good. So you can do absolute relative. So I probably could have had it be relative for the um, for the D-pad or touchpad, so that it doesn't jump position every time. But I don't know. It's definitely not one that I play a lot on here. Uh, you're hitting the limitations of using a, a joypad. Let's look at the controls. So I have this set up for, yep, so same as, as Space Duel. Oh. And, you know, the, the extra vector effects, I mean, they look clean. I think possibly the couch kit, I, 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 you know, those were super sharp. I, I think the but I do appreciate, I, I love the, the glow, you know, the subtle glow from, of, of like a, a bona fide vector display that you would have had in the arcade. They did kind of have this phosphorescence, a little glowy shadow or halo around the shot, especially the shots when you see them going across. I'm getting major nostalgia vibe from that. So pretty, pretty good stuff there. Let's look at Asteroids Deluxe. Okay. There we go, that's what I prefer. These are, it, it, it looks really neat. There's like a subtle translucence to the, um, to the simulated vector graphics uh, because you are looking at, you know, this is a, a mirror projection against a, a piece of background art. That's that. Now let's look at Crystal Castle. So this is a raster game. I've got the scan lines on. They look pretty. Um, but so this is a trackball game, but it plays pretty well with the uh, D-pad. I think I established that on um, this game is also on one of the few uh, big hits that was on the Evercade uh, collection. Now I can look them have that one. Um, now, here's a, so you're, in order to do, remember, on the uh, couch gate, I demonstrated that with the trackball type interface, you could do a long jump. Now, you still can, but you've basically got to be holding that, that D-pad down in order to make that work, because this is not a trackball. And I can use my D-pad, or my touchpad, sorry. Oh. But again, the touchpad doesn't feel quite right. It's a really awkward, you know, you're playing the game with your fingertip. If I was playing this on a Mac, you know, like a, a, a MacBook Pro or something, and I, and I, you know, then that would be one thing. I'd be resting my wrist down on something, you know, but this I'm, I'm like floating in the air and I'm trying to, to get some precision it just doesn't feel right i mean it's nice they included it but uh, i can't see this being a control option for a lot of people okay gravatar i'm just going to speed through these because i've already played these games on two different other machines Uh, so Gravatar, this was one that, that could have been on the, um, whoa, whoa, this feels a lot more, um, whoa, like I'm getting more thrust or something than I did on the Couch Cave version, possibly, it might just be in my imagination, could be because of the D-pad, I don't know. Oh, 
mission complete. I missed it. Mike's still flying around for no reason. But I think the D-pad is possibly uh, the controls for the PlayStation. I, th I think they are uh, potentially more responsive. I mean, I, I, I didn't have any problems playing this on the couch gate. It felt fine. But I do think that the, um, the DualSense and probably I would say also a PS4 gamepad, uh, but it has been a while since I had a PS4 to play this with, are giving a better result. I mean, it's a, it's a quality controller. I, I, you can't fault that. Sounds like fun. So this is another one that, let's see if I can, oh, my breakout game went back. So again, I'm using the D-pad here instead of a trackball interface, which would be more closer to the original. Seems all right so far. The ability to, I mean, this is a thing that's lacking in the arcade, uh, arcade compilation quite a lot, is that this game, unlike that, has a sensitivity control. And this is what I, my point I was making about the arcade. One of the deficiencies of it is setting aside the fact that you can't tune anything, like the difficulty, the points it takes to get a free life, how many free lives you start out with, is the fact that you cannot tune, you know, you're using a, a, a digital controller for an analog, to replace an analog interface, you have to be able to tune that. You really do. Either that or the people who make it have to be real good at tuning it and they just didn't uh, put in that effort. But obviously, uh, this game... Oh, not present, but I am finding this perfectly delightful to play with my PlayStation controller. It feels fine. I have the uh, touchpad, you know, as an option, but I don't feel the need for that. This, you know, it, it feels like it's been properly tested and vetted or whatever. Looks pretty good. I, don't, I almost want to say, you know, the couch gate really blew me away with how good it's the vector uh, sim, sim looks. Um, but I do like, I can't, you know, this game, although it does have analog controls in the arcade, you get a little floatiness, I actually don't think that was ever really necessary. And I think, you know, I, I find this a lot easier to control with just a D-pad. Because <laughs> obviously I didn't get this far doing my demo of the, um... of the Couch Cade version. But that is completely serviceable. Oh, robots. Bad, bad robots. Let's see if I can get past these guys. Yeah, got my shield on properly. Okay, got my O2. All right, let's see. Ugh. This one is quite a bit trickier. Oh, I don't have any more shield. Oh man, I don't know if I'm going to make this one. <sighs> quite challenging. That is an arcade game. Like I said before, arcade games are not here to hold your hand. They are here to take your money. Oh, did I waste my shield? No, not yet. There we go. Let's get that. Oh, for crying out, they're still shooting? I thought they, oh man. This is where the, the, the touchpad comes in handy. Just this, signing your name up. <laughs> if it was expecting an analog interface. There we go. All right, missile command. Hmm. This is one that's not going to be super great.
Much like Missile Command on the Atari collection for the Evercade, we're going to have the problem of the fact that this is not a trackball. But unlike the Evercade, we have this. We have an analog thumbstick, so we'll see. All right, so I've got Alpha, Delta, Omega. <sighs> Let's see. I don't remember this being particularly... The problem with the thumbstick is it doesn't have that tactile, you know, the, the analog control. So there you're like, ooh, it's an analog control. And in the arcade, that would have been like a big flight stick. So isn't this an advance? The reality is that these things are made to control broad movement figures, third person action games. Um, but for a game like this, I would not be using that. And so I end up like going, okay, well, let me see if I can use the, the touchpad. Uh, and, and, and you can, but I just, I, God, I just don't, I don't like it. Um, it doesn't feel right. So again, I'm going to have to say Couch Cave. If I'm going to play this kind of game, and I want the arcade, this game, this particular game, certainly, I want arcade controls. And the only way I'm going to get them is to either have a, an expensive uh, device like the Atari, you know, an arcade, arcade one-up type of, uh, device, uh, a main console, which is going to set me back a couple grand, um, or the Couchcade, which does not. So, again, if I'm, if I'm going to fire up this collection, I want to play some arcade games, it's going to be, you know, the first four. This one's interesting. Red Baron. I think I mentioned in a previous video, I think this is the first Atari game that came out with it that had a joystick. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but it is a, an arcade flight stick. So, this game is... Um, and we're setting the sensitivity in the analog stick, and I'll try using the actual analog thumbstick here. Um, I don't know why I used X for fire, but... Now, I remember seeing this in the arcade once. Uh, this was the first of... I think this might be the first attempt at a first-person uh, game in the arcade. Uh, Atari made this before, this came out before they did Star Wars Arcade and Empire Strikes Back and uh, before Battlezone. But um, what I remember playing this thing, you see it's got this blue filter because in, again in the arcade there was a blue piece of film. It's a black and white game. Um, but what I find... Uh, the controls are just like, ooh, ooh, it's all over the shop. You can see I'm like, whoop, oh, there's my plane. I, I shot down the baddies. So you're just trying to fly around. There's no radar. But this is the problem I had before, is trying to actually control this plane. It's like... I, it feels like I'm moving in spite of... I don't feel like I'm in control of what's happening. Once I, I flip it like too far in one direction, it's just like trying to get it under control again. I, I just don't feel like I'm in control of what's happening. And maybe that's the sensitivity. Let's, let me try to tweak it. I haven't played this too much because of the fact that every time I fired it up, I was just like, good Lord. Let's, let's turn it down. Was, do I want to turn it down maybe? Okay, that feels better. But before, I think it was just too much input, just causing it to not base around at all. Well, that's a lot better. Okay. So sensitivity five is clearly too high. Oof. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, it says behind me. Well, you know, this is a World War One airplane, so it's not like I had a, a rear view mirror I could use. It was a dirigible. It feels really, oh, yeah, got it. 1980. Well, I guess that's the same year as Battlezone came out. So I guess Atari was just like all about that first person dogfighting type of deal. Let's see if I can get 
these things. Oh, I crashed. Great score. Well, thank you. Now we have Sprint. Now this is a game that used a big steering wheel and an analog pedal. So, how do you think this is going to go? Steer with the left joystick, fast left thumbstick, gas with uh, R2, track select with L2, and upshift and downshift with R1, L1. Yeah, that just rolls right off the tongue. But let's, um, let's try it. I don't remember enjoying this at all. All right, so putting the coin in. Oof, all right. So basically move left and right, but, and here's the limitation. So as I've said before, when I was talking about spinner controls and coding wheels, the thumbstick is an analog interface. However, it is not an encoding wheel based one, which means that I can't keep going in one direction and tell it to go there. I have to go and remember or reorient myself to go, okay, so left and right is left and right. But if I want to make a turn, now all of a sudden I have to press down. So these guys are laughing at me because I cannot freaking and again, can I, I can use the touchpad, but again, a touchpad, I mean, that's slightly better because the touchpad is like sending a continuous input if I'm dragging it across, it's reading the input. So this is slightly more manageable. Um, the D-pad, D-pad is, is pretty good for the, you know, I would choose D-pad over analog thumbstick any day of the week. In fact, let's, let's give it a whirl just using the D-pad. Shall we? All right. And then of course, using R1 to upshift, I really should change this. With this, I can actually kind of control. But if you're using like your right trigger as an accelerator, so you're constantly on your finger on it, means you have to like adapt to use R1 with your index finger and use your middle finger for R2. So really what I probably should do if I was gonna really make a, a go of playing this, and this is like you can see, very serviceable. Analog thumbstick, absolutely not. The thumbstick is not a re suitable replacement for an encoding wheel for a racing game. You can do it for if Tempest, but here I'm trying to like go around these turns and the thumbstick is just like, right, I'm going left to turn left and right to turn right. But once I have to go and make a larger turn around a corner, I've run out of room. It will, will not make that corner. So then you're like having to, to press up and down on the, on the thumbstick and it's not into, it's, it just doesn't feel right. You, you don't, it's not intuitive. I'm, I'm still sucking, by the way, um, but <laughs> at least I'm actually able to make a lap. So that's something. Uh, you know, this is just... I mean, it's nice to include these games, but... Yeah. Not one that's, that's going to be in my rotation. And one of my faves, Super Breakout, that's another one that's going to frustrate the hell out of me. This is a game that I was really like, oh boy, it's Super Breakout. Much like I did with, you know, the Atari uh, Evercade, Atari Arcade Collection. However, as with that, I'm having to deal with this um, interface. So, reset. Yes. So I press... X, that'll switch through the things. In the arcade, I think you just hold it down. So there's double, and there's um, cavity, and then there's progressive. So let's try progressive. No. Oh, God. So, and again, with the thumbstick, it's too sensitive. I could try tweaking it, but... I think the touchpad is, is better. And again, it just doesn't, I can't relax. I'm like kind of just 
sitting here and the D-pad gives you a little more control, but if I need to get, get it to the other side of the screen, like if I break through there, the speed of the ball is going to go up hugely and I'm just not going to be able to catch the ball. I'm not going to be able to play a decent, a decent game of this. Uh, it'll just get to a point where it's physically not possible. The limitations of the control. So I can try to use the thumbstick, but this feels like using, you know, paddles with a bad potentiometer or something like that. And it, you know, it's like it jumps up, wants to jump around a lot because the tiniest movement of the stick is going to move the paddle. So I can kind of compensate for this uh, by turning down the sensitivity. Let's turn it back to a two. But the question is, if I turn it down the sensitivity so that I can actually control the thing, is that then therefore going to compromise the game? See, now I turned the sensitivity down, but now I can't hit either, you know, a reduced... I can't go to either side of the play field anymore. It's just, I, so I am using the D-pad. I can't, you know, the analog control, once you, when you turn the, 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 the sensitivity down, you basically break the freaking thing. It, it doesn't want to work right. So you can't do that. And it's like it's reduced. I guess the way it's reducing sensitivity is by reducing the resolution. So the, the amount you push to move the paddle uh, moves it less. All right, let's try and let's do the opposite. Move it to 10. See what that does for the D-pad. Nothing. This goes instantly. It's just completely absurd. You're not going to do that. It's just you have to muck around with it a lot to try to. I picked five because it was a happy medium, but it's it's not. It's not a happy medium. All right, now this I can almost get to the. I can't. I, I, I can't get it to go all the way over to the left side. It's or the right side. No, either side. Whatever. It's still rubbish. You know, you're just, it kind of goes, hey, if you want to use analog controls, we got them, but <laughs> you're not going to like it. So again, it's just not a game, you know, you can play it, you can play with the D-pad, but it's, this isn't like, you know, that Arkanoid game that you can get on the PlayStation where you can tweak the control or the control has been tweaked for you. The game's been developed for the PlayStation D-pad or for a modern controller D-pad. This wasn't. So you're taking a game that's expecting some kind of, you know, trackball, or sorry, a, a potentiometer-driven interface like a trackball you could use, uh, potentially. It wouldn't probably be as good, but you, you really want to paddle for it. That's the problem. Ultimately, it's never going to be as satisfying. And so, where's the best place for me to play Super Breakout? The Atari 2600 Plus with the freaking CX30 Plus battles. That's the best place. Even with the issues, you know, that have been documented in the Atari Age forums about paddle resolution or jitter or whatever the heck it is, it is still, I can actually play a freaking game of Super Breakout and get somewhere. Whereas this, I feel like I'm fighting the freaking D-pad on the... Evercade Plus, it's a, you know, I've only got a D-pad. I don't even have analog options, so I, it, it, although they're not unsatisfying on, on this collection. All right, so Classics Volume 3. By this time, we're getting to, we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel. I mean, we've hit all the big hits, all the, all the ones that, that, that Atari Corp has shared rights to. Um, you might notice a very glaring omission <laughs> is Battlezone because of the fact that uh, infogrames when they owned the Atari catalog and were were going they went bankrupt and were selling everything they sold Battlezone to um, Rebellion Software who came out with a very nice uh, PlayStation VR uh, game that they uh, then released a non-VR version of which I bought at that point the gold edition of Battlezone unfortunately does not include an emulated uh, version of the arcade game so emulated arcade Battlezone not to be found could at games have have licensed it? Possibly, we don't know. It wasn't in the room. It would be nice to think that that would appear in some form someday, somewhere. Uh, people are hopeful that Atari 50, which has already had some additional content released for it for free, that Atari might license it and release it as a piece of DLC. I would certainly pay 
uh, more than like, you know, a pound for it. I'd pay like 10 quid for the thing. I mean, I want to play Battle Zone and a wonderful presentation here. And, you know, I like Robot Tank, but it's not Arcade Battle Zone. I'd like to play Arcade Battle Zone without booting my Mac up. So, but here's the remainder of the arcade games that we have. So these are, and there's a surprising number of them, uh, but they are the bottom of the, these are like the most obscure games, some of them. But we do have some that were on, included on the uh, Evercade Atari arcade, uh, like Canyon Bomber. And, uh, well, that was the only one. Oh, and Skydiver. So these are interesting games. Um, so Avalanche is kind of like Kaboom. I'm trying to catch all the rocks in my ladder and not miss any. I guess I'm trying to stop an avalanche or save people from an avalanche by collecting individual stones. But you notice that as I go, parts of my paddle are disappearing. This. Now is this another? Oh, oh God! Yeah. All right. So there's a miss. So this is another game that would have been like a paddle-driven game. So I suspect this is one that I can play initially, but as difficulty goes up, I'm going to not be able to exist because of the fact that it's a game that requires me to actually have a paddle. Oh, the width of my paddles got smaller. That's that's not cool. My buckets or whatever. Ooh. This is actually easier than playing Kaboom. <laughs> All right. Got the four. Let's do it. Collect the rocks. Yeah. Well, there's not much to that. Now, you'll notice that one of the things that's lacking here, certainly compared to the Digital Eclipse compilations, is there's no data card about the game. There's no information telling me, like, well, when did it come out? Uh, you know, flyers, history, none of that. Canyon Bomber, this one's, you know... I played this on the... Uh, this was one of the more successful games on the uh, Evercade, Atari Arcade Collection, because it's a game that you play by pressing a button. The most basic Atari game that exists. You might think it was Pong, but Pong has a, a, a paddle interface. You know, you got a paddle controller. It's a little more finesse than this. This is just, right, am I, am I, am I timing the release of my bomb to take out the numbers in the canyon? And I, and I won. Wow, look at me. I can beat the computer. Fire Truck. This is another racing, uh, driving game, I should say. All right, so I got a horn. Select a track, and I've got the gas. Great. Let's play. So, front start or rear start, because you can play it two-player. In two-player, one person is, is choosing... Um, There's one person controls the uh, front part, steers the front of the fire truck, and the other one steers the rear. Right, so there I'm using the... It's black and white, but that crunch, it looks cool, you know? I, I think the, the, there's a little, some little graphical flair to this. Obviously, not having an actual steering wheel controller uh, makes this tougher to control. Oh. And so when you're using a D-pad, you're over, very easy to oversteer. If you're using the analog stick, also very easy to oversteer because, again, an analog stick is not a steering wheel. I mean, the fact that they make racing games for the, for the PlayStation that, that are designed around the thumbstick, I mean, I, that is one thing you will not find on my PlayStation collection is any kind of uh, analog-driven racing game. I have Need for Speed, but I have it on the Wii U because I play it with the Wii wheel. Because I want an arcade racing experience. I want it to have something approaching arcade controls. 
I don't want to be nudge, nudging a little thumbstick. This doesn't feel good. And this is also not feeling good. Uh, these, th uh, the one I remember of these I remember was football. An interesting game that is played solely with a trackball. And I remember about this in the arcade is the arcade I used to go to uh, as a kid was Dennis's Place for Games, um, located south of Clark Street in, in Chicago in East Rogers Park. The not so great part of East Rogers Park, I should note. Uh, so that the uh, there were signs, uh, uh, requirements. Dennis was a very classy fellow. All of his people wore these white shirts. They looked like, you know, cause they were working, working in a casino. Mirrored ceilings and, you know, it was a, a, a nice jukebox. Really kind of uh, upscale kind of feel to it. But arcades were new then. But he would, he had a very specific thing. The only thing that was missing was like a bar or something like that. Um, but uh, you could smoke. So a lot of the machines had ashtrays on them. Uh, you know, there was no prohibition on indoor smoking. Um, but one of the features inside, you walked in and in front of the uh, main uh, cashier was uh, an Atari football. And you'd have a couple guys and they'd be doing the two-handed, two-handed, you know, on the on the uh, on the big trackball to to run their players. I have no idea what to do with this game. This is another limitation of this. There's no man instructions here. Um, you know, I, I so I I don't understand what they think you're going to do here. Right punt, curveball, knuckleball, change up, swing, add an inning. I guess that's if you're putting more money into it. Select hit pitch. It's you know this is not going to be good. I'm not a big sports guy. I, I I just I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, that was me pitching. I don't even know who's up. Am I up right now? Ah, see, I can't tell what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to play the sports games because I don't know what I'm doing. They're too complicated to not have controls. <laughs> uh, let's see, Destroyer. I think this is another one of these. All right, fast, slow, release the charge so I can, can set the depth. Oh, this will be, um, so this, uh, you might remember that, um, so Canyon Bomber on the Atari 2600, this is the other game mode, right? Now, unlike that, Uh, I have different buttons here, but like that, I am not having a good time. Oh, there we go. I got one. Graphically, this looks way better than the 2600 version, and it benefits from the fact that I'm not competing with a cheating AI that is shamelessly able to just plant the depth charges wherever it wants them to go. But like the 2600 version, I have to have the depth set before I release the charge. I can't change it. Nope. Come on. Let's see if I can hit that one. Yes. Bigger area effect going on for the explosions. So that's cool. Makes life easier. Yeah, got it. And that's it. You can play some more if you want, but do you want to? Not really, but it's it's a nice inclusion. Dominoes. This is not um, not Domino Man, which is a, a midway game that's pretty groovy. This is older than that. So you're up, down, left, right. We're just moving the dominoes. But again, I don't know what I'm doing because we don't have any instructions. Fine, let's try it. Okay. So it basically looks like it's kind of like surround or snake, if you like. 
but instead of just trying to surround someone, I'm trying to build a long trail of dominoes. I don't know if it's more or less advantageous to set off my bunch of dominoes. See if I score a point from him tripping it. Yes, I did. Okay, so it's just surround. It's just that you're 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 conceptually dropping dominoes. Whatever. Maze invaders. I think I've read about this somewhere because I think this might be in the Atari 50. I think this is an arcade game that was never actually released. Like they build a mock-up, which is what that picture is of. But I don't think that it. Um, and it looks like it had an analog joystick. Why does it reverse a circle? Let's make that X and that, no, square. There we go. And I'm trying to remember if there's a, all right. Maybe it's 25. There's a little character here, so I'm like trying to grab the fruit. I played this before. You can change your facing with the reverse button. <coughs> and you have a gun. <coughs> For some reason. Okay. I'm grabbing the little circles. And then I leave. Oh, I started maze four, not maze twenty-five. I was just telling me I can get a life in maze twenty-five. It's just confusing what I'm trying to do. I can see why they didn't release this because this is one of these games. There's a few arcade games like this where you're like, I'm doing what now? I mean, to me, Lock and Chase feels kind of like this, where you're just like, okay, I can see what I'm doing, but is this fun? So run around, grab all the things, the door opens, leave. So it's a mechanic that's, that is found in other games. The addition, the complication is that I'm trapped by moving walls. That's not a lot of fun. Come on, I can't get the things now? What, what's the story here? All right, we'll go bottom. Ooh, there's some guys shooting at me. Now they have guns too. I don't know why I need a flip button though. That doesn't seem advantageous to me. I am moving around. I mean, I can move backwards just as easily as forwards. The music's kind of cool. I mean, this is a nice historical edition. Oh, come on. Couldn't get out of there? But look at this, not just nine this time. Ooh, we've got 14. 14 arcade games. Now we have, oh goodness. Shift up, down, first gear is X, second. Oh, we can also do them with the buttons. Just jump straight to it. What was that? So it's like first gear, we're going anti-clockwise? Or no, it's not even that. One, two, yeah, it's a zigzag. Uh, right. So gas is, so I'm going to do this. So I'll make my shifter square and shift down X. Okay. And that way I might have a hope in hell of playing this. All right. And I'm not even going to try the steering wheel game. I'm not even going to try the analog controls. I'm just gonna stick with the stick with the uh, oh the D-pad. Oh, what I crash and he doesn't? Come on! All right. Oh God, fourth gear, I'm all right. That was 
little bit of Beach Boys there. For those in the know. Okay. Oh, I really need to stop running into those guys. Be good if there was a visual representation of what gear I was in. Ah, oh, come on. Why do they never crash? It's not fair. It tells me what speed I'm going. It doesn't tell me a position though. I guess it doesn't matter, it's just as long as I finish the race and I ran out of fuel. You know, that makes me feel nothing. Pool shark, what do we got here? Another analog stick game. Or actually it's got like a joystick with a little collar around it. Uh, so it probably is an analog stick with some kind of extra jazz. All right, let's fired up. I'm still controlling my cue ball on the table. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I don't get what am I so I'm just supposed to go back here and then just like I'm playing bulls or something? Like what the bull? I thought I was playing billiards. Why isn't there a button? And I would see my basic control, right? Play billiards with the freaking you can buy games today that have you know you 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 pull back on the stick and then you hit X to release to, sh to shoot. You try to put power on it. Here I'm just going, yeah, just just knock a ball in. Do what you like, yeah, no. Okay, super bug. This is gonna be, you know, it gives you a jump and bump feel from looking at the uh, sides. Jump and bumper, which is also known as burning rubber, I think. Data East game. Another one of my favorite. You have to shift, jazz, and you're picking a track. Okay, let's, let's see what we got. It's another color, it looks like Monte Carlo, basically. I got to upshift. My first gear is like worthless. So it's a lot curvier track. Got the crashy sound effects from Fire Engine. And the visual flare. Crunch, not just crash, crunch. And I'm basically just like, how long can I drive? Is the fuel included? In? Oh, God. All right, I'll try using the analog stick just for fun. No, see, it's doing that thing again, like I was saying. The problem with using the analog stick is it wants to give you, like, the illusion of a steering wheel. So it's not just left and right. If you press up and down, it's going to cause it to steer more. And I just can't wrap my... My brain, it, it, you know, it's not, it's not natural. I mean, you are kind of like going, like you're, you're basically wanting to move the, the thumbstick like it's a steering wheel, but it's not a steering wheel. It travels in a way that's not like a steering wheel. Like you're going to move it all around. Ugh. And last but not least, Skydiver. I should have done Superbug last so you got on a high note. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> This is going to be a much better high note. All right, we'll put the, I don't like this, this setup. Square, shoot will be X. And we just go left and right. So I played this on um, the Atari Evercade, uh, the Evercade Atari Arcade Collection. Um, by the way, normally I would be sitting back in the, in the sofa, you know, better back support and all that, but I want to be present. In the in the video i don't want to be a voiceless a faceless entity speaking i want you to see that i'm doing this i don't normally lean forward like this playing a game 
All right, and this looks, you know, obviously very familiar. I don't, I went off the screen. What the heck? Over there. Come on, really? Nice cheating computer. The only thing I have going for me is the computer doesn't seem to be as accurate. So all I have to do is try to outlast it, and I might be able to get there. Yeah, come on, the wind, go in my favor. Or don't go against me, at the very least. Yeah, see, the computer's already shot a shot, so. I got it. I'm in with it. I'm in with a chance. No, no, no. What? Uh, hey, one foot counts. This is rare. An arcade game that has collision detection uh, that actually favors the player. Three ten. All right. Again, as with the other one, you know, and it looks in this, unlike the uh, uh, Evercade, I have the wonderful bezel. I mean, it, and, you know, the Evercade's bezels are generic. It has a surround. You can turn on the, the wallpaper. I like this, you know, and it's got the flashing that you would have had of the fire buttons in the arcade. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's no option to turn that off. So, at least I don't think so. I don't know, I guess you could do, uh, no, nope. No, no, no. Well, for shame. Anyway, so there you go. Flashback Classics arcade interface. Not bad, not shabby at all. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do for the next video is I will do, because of the fact that it's a much larger collection, they're all in one go, is the Atari 50, which was emulated by Digital Eclipse I'm not going to go into the, all the extras, but that compilation is, you know, chef's kiss, just fantastic. But the flashback classics are no slouches. You do have, uh, well, we will see. That's what I'm going to be looking for in the 50. Does the 50 of all the games that we've just seen on the flashback classics? I'm not going to spoil it, but the answer is no. But does it have games that aren't the flashback classics? The answer is yes. So... Stay tuned. Until next time, keep gaming.